and thanks for watching Back to the Altar. You know, I can remember when I thought Halloween was just a fun little holiday where we got dressed up, we took our kids out, and it was just a whole lot of innocence until I watched what you're about to experience. Get ready, this one will change your world. Here comes Pastor Glenn with Mom and I Be a Witch. As you know, the occult is, is pretty much infiltrated everything in our society, right? Uh, it's in music. Uh, you can even get it in your phone covers. Uh, it's in games. Uh, it's pretty much everywhere. We have all kinds of, uh, we have all kinds of uh, 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 paranormal shows. Uh, they're always looking for ghosts. Uh, they're, they're always, you know, you know, got all this camera work here. I've never seen one, and when I watch it, it's not a ghost. They, they just kind of, oh, did you hear that? And nothing's there. And and we have we have, but it's all this paranormal. You notice that's kind of really in, and they're 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 making money off of it, else they wouldn't be on TV. You have you have you have uh, kid psychics. You have the kid psychic show. Uh, they have pet psychics. Did you know they have pet psychics? That if you're having a problem with your dog and you don't, and the doctor doesn't know what's wrong, you can call up a pet psychic. And, and, and he'll just look at your dog and, 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 and the a demon will tell him what's wrong with Rover. And, and Rover, uh, his, his dad left him when he was little and, and didn't get a bone when he was a child. So that's pretty much what happens to your dog. In one of a column that I read, a teacher of a fourth grade class asked her students to write a short essay on what they would like to do most to celebrate Halloween. 80% of her nine-year-olds expressed the wish to kill somebody. Now, tell me, are they born with that idea or you think they see that on TV and movies that we are allowing for them to see because we're watching it? How would you like to be, have your children introduced to witchcraft in their elementary school? Now, this is going to alarm you here when I read you this, but this is true. I'm not going to tell you the elementary school, but the elementary school students were taken overnight to, on a field trip to a local graveyard. They learned magic and witchcraft in the classroom. Now the lawsuit lists more than 30 instances. They're suing them. The parents, the Christian parents, are suing them for doing this to their children. Thank God for these Christian parents. Here's what they did. First school officials invited a new age crystal healer and a psychic to speak at the elementary school. Secondly, third graders learn how to tell fortunes and read tarot cards. And the most bizarre example for the lesson about evolution, fourth graders were taken on a field trip to a graveyard. We were taken to a children's cemetery and you walk onto the tombs and lie down on the gravesite to see if you could fit into the child's coffin. A school does this, field trip. In addition, fourth graders had to write a poem entitled, How God Messed Up. The fifth graders performed various Aztec rituals, including one to conjure up dead spirits. Sixth graders spent three months learning about pagan gods who are central to New Age occultism. All the devil's toys will have a payday one day. They're all going to cost you. They all will. Now, as you know, I, I just mentioned to you earlier, being from South Louisiana, which if I'm in New Orleans, there are voodoo shops all along, and you've seen that, and people have that there. Hispanics here have a day of the dead. And I know we have probably have our church would be Hispanic here, and some of you, culturally, you grew up with this. But as I have shared all of this, I waited for you to hear that so you can hear how close it is to all of the detestable practices that I just spoke about in the history of what October 31st is. Let me show you. This is a newspaper. This is in our, was in our paper of the Day of the Dead. Let me read you this and see what this sounds like to you. Every autumn when America celebrates Halloween, Mexico celebrates death. For Mexicans, the Day of the Dead actually lasts three days. The holiday is a mixture of Catholicism and the beliefs of Aztecs and other indigenous people in Mexico. That's not Bible. It's not saying there. It's not simply a chance to remember the dead, but to communicate with their spirits. Now look at me. You're not communicating with Aunt Arthur. You're not, you're not communicating with Uncle Jack. You're not communicating with Cousin, cousin Bill. They are dead. 
to be absent from the body, you're either with the Lord or now you have gone to the other place. You're not lingering around after you die. It's an appointment of the man wants to die and then judgment. So what you're doing is when you're doing this, you're not speaking to your dead relative. You're speaking to an evil spirit, a demonic spirit. Okay? Now, you can say, well, I don't know if I want to believe that. I just don't feel that's right. Well, I, I'm telling you right here what the Bible says. You're not speaking to your relative. You can't call your relative back. All of that the mediums are doing, they're conjuring an evil spirit. So family members then drive hundreds of miles to return to burial sites of mothers. According to the Mexican beliefs, the spirits of the dead travel home, wow, once a year to dine on food and also spend the night. Did I not talk about that? That happened, I don't know how many years ago, the same thing? And we're still doing that today? Well, tell me if that's not a detestable practice that we talked about. Mexicans set up elaborate altars so that their deceased loved ones will want to come home. Do not. It, it, it's not your relative coming home. You understand? Do not allow that to happen. Please do not allow that to happen. You say, well, that's our culture. Get rid of it in your culture. I have to get things out of my culture, too. You got to do that too. You are a child of God. Act like a child of God. Don't act like a person of the world. We're not of this world. We're in it, but we're not of it. Amen. In Leviticus, it says it very clearly. God has a view on this. He says, do not defile yourselves by turning to mediums or those who consult spirits of the dead. I am the Lord, your God. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, can I? Don't do it is saying. It says this in Thessalonians. It says, stay away from every kind of evil, period. That's a command to you and I, stay away. Don't be involved. So that's why we give the alternative. It's really not the alternative. We would be doing this. If there was some day the devil ever stole from God or stole his day, we're going to come back and trump that thing and take the territory back because it is God's day. Now what you're about to see is a illustrated drama. What you're going to see is a true story. Preacher friend of mine, this is his story. This is true. It's a witch's invitation to a preacher, and it was to him, this friend of mine. And he's the one that's in this story that went over to Isaac. Isaac is a witch, and Isaac invited this man of God to come over to meet with him. And this is true. It's a witch's invitation. One peaceful afternoon, I picked up from my mailbox the strangest looking letter I'd ever seen. A chilling little envelope boarded with flying bats and eerie serpents whose eyes were tinted green. The letter was addressed to me, so as I opened it, I froze. What I read turned my complexion three shades of blue. It said, my name is Isaac Horwitz. I'm a male witch, a warlock, and I feel I need to spend some time with you. Now, as a Christian from a little church with God's call on my life, a man of faith and power with the challenge to grow, I did what any saint would do in my situation. I tore it up and said, no, no way, I'm going to go. Then gently and methodically, the Holy Spirit spoke and reminded me, we're God's voice to our nation. It's the church's responsibility to witness. So reluctantly, I accepted this witch's invitation. He had the house you would expect, the old English cottage, a nightmare on Elm Street special right to the core. The overgrown ivy, the gate that creaked when opened. Somehow you would expect Freddy to answer this door. The doorbell rang, a hollow gong, the knob twisted, then opened. Then Isaac stood before me with a grin. His jet black hair and well-trimmed beard flowed with his black silk clothes. My skin crawled as he said, please come on in. His house was filled with every occultic symbol you can fathom. Hanging pentagrams and horoscope signs. A Ouija board and Dungeons and Dragons games sitting on the table. A crystal ball with an incandescent shine. Then graciously he handed me some steamy herbal tea. Its presence caused my memory to jog. 
I thought of every whore flick I'd seen when I was a kid and thought, man, you drink this stuff next day and you'll be a frog. Then he led me to a high back chair as he meticulously began to unfold his scenario with evil patients. I was given a giant leather bound book jammed with newspaper clippings, thus the reason for this witch's invitation. With eagerness, he pointed to each article with pride. He said, I healed this woman through a Babylonian chant. See this man? I cured him while performing druid worship. I was paid to curse this man with AIDS by his aunt. On and on, page after page, delightfully he flaunted each incident for an hour without a breath. He said, do you realize through my understanding of the dark regions that I can make you rich or even curse someone to death? I sat literally intimidated by his immensity demon power while his face shone with a satanic arrogant bliss. Then placing his hands on the arms of my chair and leaning into my face, he said, what can your God do to compete with this? I knew then how Moses felt when his rod turned to a serpent and the three musicians did the same. It's as if you're sitting there in that stunned moment while your faith gets violated and all you feel is weak powerless and lame. I desperately and deeply prayed saying, Jesus, give me wisdom. I don't want to put you through some foolish test. Then a shaft of light shot through my soul, igniting my eyes with fire. God stood me up and I threw the book back in his chest. I said, Isaac, I will not compare God's miracle versus Satan's. The issue is not God's kingdom and Satan's lair. The real comparison is the condition of your soul and the condition of mine. And you puppet of the devil, that I will compare. I said, my friend, one day they're coming for you. Those soft associates and your incantations. The friendly demons you think you now control. The time will come when you'll be lying in bed, wheezing like a dying animal, when those spirits lay claim to the rights they own to your soul. Then the room will grow dark, and the most hideous faces you've ever seen will come flaming out of the floor with the yell. The vile informants that promise reincarnation will claw your spirit and victoriously drag your soul to hell. Then I grabbed the book and said, in that moment, which mantra, which incantation you gonna chant to tell them to leave you alone? I said, my friend, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt what I would say, I am bought with the blood of Jesus, let me go. I said, Isaac, when you toss that book into my lap, you glow with a sinner's victory. You rejoice when you saw your name in black and white. Now I rejoice, but not that your council of demons are subject to Jesus, but that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Then Isaac jumped up from his chair and screamed, you must leave now. I said, I will. But one last obligation. Next time, think twice before you rumble with the men of God. And by the way, thanks for your uh, witch's invitation. In this message here, we're going to learn the truth. We're going to hear all about it. October 31st is called the Festival of the Dead. The earliest celebrations of Halloween were held by this group called the Druids. What I want to tell you is facts are facts. Regardless of what you believe, facts will override what your feelings are. I have been asked by a lot of people, almost 40 years of ministry I've had, and we're still growing. And there are principles that I have used in my ministry for so many years that I want to teach you. 
Not only are you going to hear my messages, my leadership areas that I want to teach you, I've also opened up all of our different ministry areas. So I have my children's pastor that is teaching your children's pastors or anybody interested in children uh, how to build a children's ministry, youth ministry, young adult ministry, married ministry, men's ministry, all the ministries of a church. This is going to be available for you for the Leadership Plus area. And I'm excited about helping you to see that dream and that passion that you have to see people reached. This is going to help you, and I pray that it will be a tremendous time of growth in your life, and I would love to hear the results. Let me tell you the best part of that story is that Isaac's wife got saved a week after that took place. His wife came to the Lord. Scripture says this, the angel threw the devil into the bottomless pit, which he then shut and locked so Satan could not, what's that word there? Probably, what did I say in the beginning of this? It's amazing that I think one of the greatest strengths if the devil has one, it's not power, it's deception. That he has the ability for people to sit and hear truth and for people to walk out and say, nah, I just don't believe. That's called deception. But see, one day that deception is going to be over one day. For those of you that are dabbling in the cult, if you're in this building here, it's going to be over for you. And you saw enough scriptures that God says, don't even think that it's Christian or connected to Bible of what you do, that you're helping people. You helping people without Jesus Christ, you're not helping people in what you're doing. My wife, this will take just one minute here. I said, Debbie, tell me what is the biggest issue you deal with thousands of people over the years. Now listen to this. We're going to be here just a couple more minutes. Give me uh, a short, short message on what is the strongest area of difficulty to see people get free of strongholds in their life. What area is that that you deal with of all the people you deal with at the altar? I'm going to let her. That you deal with of all the people you deal with at the altar. I'm going to let her tell you on this video. Watch. I am Pastor Deborah Berto, and I am here to tell you that through the years as the head of the deliverance department here at this church, I have prayed for thousands. I've trained others to pray for, for hundreds of people. And the ones that are hardest to get set free are the ones that have dabbled in the occult and witchcraft. There are so many areas of divination and witchcraft and the occult and voodoo and Satanism that people can get involved in other than just Halloween. They are the hardest people to get set free. We are here to expose every work of darkness, not just trick-or-treating in Halloween. Samuel tells us that the sin of rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. My warning to you today is that this sin, the sin of witchcraft, the sin of rebellion, uh, is more dangerous and more binding than any spirit that we deal with at the altar. It opens the door to the spirit of fear. It opens the door to the spirit of death, to fear of death. Church, we are here as an altar team, a deliverance ministry for whatever you have dabbled in, whatever has you have participated in, we can get you set free. That's our desire. We want to see you free. God wants you free. God wants you free. We just stand to your feet, stand to your feet all over the building. The lights come up a little bit. We'll take a couple minutes here because this is real, real important. I don't want anybody here to feel guilty and saying, boy, you know, I, I've dabbled in witchcraft. I kind of do that on the side. I kind of enjoy a few things here. I'm not, no one's upset because I would just say you didn't know. I mean, there's a lot of people play with the Ouija board that didn't know. You just don't know. But once you do know, and if you continue, then what happens, it even becomes stronger in your life because you rejected a way out, which means that you're locking yourself down even stronger. So you have an opportunity today to say, okay, I didn't know, but I hear this. And I'm just saying this with a heart of love to you. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not at all criticizing or tearing you down of anything you do. We're all sinners here, except for Christ saving us. We were all lost. 
there was, there's not one good person that was in this room right here. Not one. God had to clean us all up no matter where we grew up and what we did. And so I'm appealing to you, please do not allow this thing to grab hold of you and destroy your life. The devil is not here to play with you, and he's not a name that is fun like the world wants to put it. It's just a fun thing. We're just doing things and having a blast. There's going to be a, there's going to be a rope at the end of this thing, and you're going to hang yourself. Spiritually, you're going to die. And really, I think we need to start thinking more of the after than we do right now because this time that we live, those of you think you got all the time in the world, this is called just like a vapor. This is just, compared to eternity, this is nothing. 70, 80, 90 years here is nothing. Where do you want to spend it? I know there are people that are here saying, you know what, not only do I need to deal with the areas of the occult and break that. You know what I realized? I realized that some people, listen, some people are having, you ever have these things happen to you and you say, I don't get it. I don't understand why this happened to me. It just doesn't make any sense. I wonder if there's something you haven't broken in your past that's still lingering in your life. And if so, that little snake there is still causing havoc and causing things to go sideways in your life. And maybe you need to put an ax to that root. Okay? Now think about it. Because if there's something in the past that you did, you worshiped idols or you had different things that you believed in, you had objects that you prayed to and carried it with you, that's idolatry. It's wrong. You've got you to you gotta renounce those things, okay? You really do. I want you to bow your heads all over because all over this building, I believe there's a lot of people here that want to be sure you're going to heaven. I definitely don't want anybody here to go to hell. I want to meet all of you in heaven one day. So listen to me. I'm going to ask you to lift your hands in about 10 seconds. But listen, I want you to ask yourself, do you know for sure if something happened to you tonight? Who would have thought last last night, who would have thought during this week this little boy, this little boy would die? I don't know if I'm going to see you next week. There could be a car wreck, God forbid. You know what I'm saying? God forbid any of that happened. But we pick up the paper every day and read about things that the people never thought would happen that we pick it up and read. You only have today. Today is the day. The devil's favorite word is tomorrow. Hey, put it off. Do it anytime. You don't know what the rest of your life is going to be. None of us here do. I don't know either. But I want to be sure right now today. So all over the building, you want to be sure If something happened to you, you would know it without a shadow of a doubt you're going to heaven. And you don't know that right now, but you want to be sure. Lift your hands now. One, two, three. Lift your hands all over the building. Come on. Balcony, lift your hands. Come on. Be honest. This is the place to do it. Please don't reject now. Don't do this now. Don't reject now. And as I'm giving this call here, all of you with lifted hands here, I want you to have some boldness and come down and walk right down here to this altar. And I'm going to pray for you. Come on. This whole row here. Come on down. If you came with somebody, listen. Turn to them and say, I want to go down with you. This is the day. Come on down and grab their hand and come down with them. Turn to somebody in the balcony. Turn to them and come on down. From the balcony, just walk down. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I'm not going to take but 30 more seconds here. Hurry up. Come down. This is something you run to. This is not something you just kind of, I think I'm going to. No, you made the decision. You drove all the way here to church, walked all the way into your seat. Can you not walk 20 more feet to find out that your name is going to be written in a book and go to heaven? Why not? Why not? Come on down. You brought somebody with you that needs to come down. That's the best thing you can do if you're a friend of theirs. Is saying, come on, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. I'll go with you. Now, listen up. We're going to pray, and I'm going to dismiss you. Get your kids and whatever. But there's an altar team here that is equipped and have learned from my wife how to pray for you. And there are things in your life that you have dabbled with over the past. I don't want to have your hands raised because I'm not here to embarrass you. I want to respect you. But then again, I don't want you to have this in your life too. I want to help you. And these can come down. They can pray for you, okay? And you just, if you come down, because the parking lot's going to be full, take some time and take some interest in yourself to get yourself well and get yourself right. That would be good, okay? I'm just waiting for some of these from the balcony to come down. Give them a hand here. They came all the way from the balcony. Amen. God bless you. Come on down. Take a couple steps forward, everybody. Yeah. A couple steps forward. Good. 
Yeah, come on. Everybody take the right hand and put it over your heart. Take your left hand and reach up to heaven. Reach up. And we're going to pray. This is kind of like I want God to talk, to touch my heart is what we're doing basically. And pray this with me. Just bow your heads and say this. Say, Lord, I realize I'm a sinner. I haven't done things right in my life. Made a lot of mistakes. I've hurt people. And I'm going to forgive them right now. And most importantly, I forgive myself for all the dumb things I've done. I've hurt people too. And I'm sorry. I ask forgiveness. Lord, I realize I've done my best to live my life. I've failed many times. I need you in my life to help me. I need to change. I can't change on my own. I need you, the change maker, to come into my life. Restore the broken areas. There's something when I said that. Restore the broken areas, the hurts, the pain, the fears. Take it away. I give myself to you, Lord. I really mean this. I need you in my life to be the person you want me to be. So I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. In this message here, we're going to learn the truth. We're going to hear all about it. October 31st is called the Festival of the Dead. The earliest celebrations of Halloween were held by this group called the Druids. What I want to tell you is facts are facts regardless of what you believe. Facts will override what your feelings are. sicknesses and illnesses and infirmities broken by the blood of Jesus right now we've got the necks of our enemy we're standing on the necks of our enemy and we tell him you are a defeated foe you are a defeated foe you have been dethroned and disarmed and defeated you are under our feet in the name of Jesus I see an army of people rising up If you want to stay plugged in on Glen Toe Ministries, you can check out our website, glenbirdtoe.com, or you can follow us on...